Hey friend, welcome to Self Transformed, a podcast redefining self-care through simple fitness, nutrition, and mindset habits. I'm your host, Emily Nichols, certified personal trainer, Whole30 coach, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I know the struggle is real when it comes to taking care of you. I too am a busy working mom who felt physically and emotionally drained until I took action on my own transformation journey. I finally found the solutions to feeling confident and living a healthy lifestyle that doesn't feel hard and now I'm on a mission to equip you with sustainable tools to help transform your life from the inside out, guilt free. Together, we will simplify your health and fitness into daily habits that don't feel like another thing on your long to-do list, but daily actions that light you up instead. So if you're ready to redefine self-care and step into your own self-transformation, then let's do this. You're listening to episode 139 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I hope your week is off to a great start already. We are continuing the conversation this week on all things plant-based. I know this is a form of eating that a lot of people are interested in just from the DMs I got and folks that have expressed an interest in doing the Whole30 with me before, but there really wasn't a protocol for them to do in the past if they were coming from a plant-based or vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. Well, if you didn't hear the news a couple weeks ago, the Whole30 announced that they do have a plant-based Whole30 protocol now, and I shared all last week on last Thursday's episode, my own experience going through a plant-based Whole30 this past January. Big takeaways from that episode for me. I learned so much. You know, I love to do like self-experimentation with my body and my habits, and I definitely learned a lot and had some healthier habits um, established coming into my food freedom from that Whole30. But Because of that experience and being kind of part of that beta coaching group, I am now a certified plant-based Whole30 coach. I went through the certification process and I have created a brand new plant-based Whole30 Anytime course for you. I'm super excited about this. If you haven't heard, you know, I've been a Whole30 certified coach for, gosh, has it been over three years now? Maybe longer. I'd have to look, maybe longer, but Whole30 is what really started my whole transformation journey back in 2015, and it was one of the first certifications I got after, you know, um, personal training, group fitness, and spinning instructor um, certs before that because I wanted to help serve people. Whole30 was such a great way to establish healthier habits around food and living without guilt around food and just living in my food freedom now. And being able to help people do that through my Whole30 Anytime course the past few years has been so amazing. I love hearing about all of their successes, non-scale victories, and how a lot of them are helping others now too, which is just It's super inspiring. Just passing it on, serving others, like, come on, that's so great. But with the plant-based Whole30, that gives us an option to allow folks that maybe have been plant-based, vegetarian, vegan, whatever, in the past, have the benefit of this life-changing protocol and to do it from a lens of being plant-based. So... I created the plant-based Whole30 Anytime course. It's very similar to my traditional course if you've ever done that, but we're doing it with a plant-based lens. There's a couple of different, um, very, very different um, options as far as the way a traditional Whole30 looks versus a plant-based Whole30. The reintroductions are totally different. Your protein sources are different. So I'm excited to help lead you through that as far as what I learned personally going through it and what I learned through the certification process as well. So Whole30 is launching a um, nationwide plant-based Whole30 for the first time starting March 1st. You can get my Whole30, my plant-based Whole30 Anytime course, anytime, hence the name, anytime. Start at anytime. Have me as your virtual cheerleader. I really come from 
a place of eating as a form of self-care and really evaluating your habits and relationship around food. And we dig super deep into what food freedom is going to look like afterwards and what your why your reintroduction is super duper important because I don't want you going face first in a pizza on day 31. Like, no, not going to do that, friend. I'm not going to allow you to do that. I'll help give you that accountability, some tough love, and answer a lot of questions that I know you may have doing a plant-based Whole30 for the first time. So to grab that course, you can start at any time. You can grab it now and wait to start March 1st with everyone else doing the the plant-based Whole30, but you can do it at any time of year. You can go to bit.ly slash PB Whole30 anytime, okay? So that's PB as in plant-based, Whole30 anytime. I have a link in the show notes for you as well. But I can't wait to talk a little bit more about the benefits of going plant-based today with my friend, Hope Pedraza. So gang, let me tell you a little bit about Hope. I love this conversation with her and I know you're going to love it too. So Hope is a certified holistic nutritionist, functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and host of the Hopeful and Wholesome podcast. I love the name of her show. So Hope helps driven women to heal their gut with a plant-focused diet and functional nutrition. So she specializes in a plant-focused nutrition per her own journey with a plant-focused diet, and she has helped heal her own digestion, immune system, and so much more by transitioning to a plant-based diet nearly 10 years ago. So we're definitely going to be talking about the benefits from the inside out about a plant-based diet today and Hope is going to answer maybe a lot of misconceptions you have about eating in a plant-based way. So, and just to note, I am not 100% plant-based. I eat animal protein, but I definitely have upped eating more plants since my experience with a plant-based Whole30 and that's the great thing about this. I was able to learn a little bit more about myself and establish some healthier habits. And it was a really great challenge for me mentally and physically. And I hope when you are thinking about your way of eating, you're eating in a form of a way of self-care and also getting that data about yourself so you can make your own decisions as far as what type of eating protocol is best for you and your needs. Okay. So get a pen and paper handy as always. Sit back and relax. Wait till the end of the episode because I will share my three biggest takeaways for you in case you were busy, you know, drive in, you couldn't click the, the show notes or if you're doing dishes or you're in the shower <laughs> right now. Okay, let's get into this episode with Hope. All right, gang, welcome back to Self Transformed. I hope you are staying warm and cozy wherever you are in the country at this point. I am super excited to have my new friend, Hope Pedraza, from the Hopeful and Wholesome podcast on the show today. Hope, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Emily. I'm so excited to dig into this conversation. I just released an episode about my own plant-based experience. So we're going to dig into all things plant-based today. And I'll share a little bit more about that with you too. I'm super excited about it. Um, But the first question I ask every guest is what comes to mind when you hear the phrase self-transformed? What does that mean to you? I love that. Um, I feel like this is such a relevant question because I feel like I've been going through my own like self-transformation of sorts. Um, you know, I think COVID struck up a lot of things for a lot of people. And for me, it was kind of a wake up call that I have not really been taking care of myself. Like I thought I had, right. Mm -hmm. Um, just, um, I did my FDN, which I'm sure we'll talk about in in a little while, but I did my FDN training kind of through COVID and did some tests myself and realized like my cortisol levels, a lot of other things are just not where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I consider myself a healthy person. I, you know, I eat clean and I, you know, all those things, but anyway, beating around the bush here, but I think for me, self-transformed is, um, recognizing Um, I guess my weaknesses and my own like Mm. self-care kind of um, journey, I guess, Mm -hmm. and um, just transforming just on all levels, right? Like mind, body, spirit, soul, all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you mentioned, you know, you're looking into even only like your challenges that you have in your life and like, what can I do to improve on these? And where Mm -hmm. am I lacking that I can thrive in instead. That's so awesome. I love Mm -hmm. that. Well, Hope, what is your own transformation story? Can you tell a little bit about yourself, kind of your story, where you've been and what you do and who you are today? Yeah, for sure. So um, my background is in dance and that's kind of what got me into Pilates. I have a brick and mortar Pilates and fitness studio. Um, And so I spent 
you know, really all of my adult life into or early life up into my twenties dancing and, you know, coaching dance teams and choreographing and all that stuff. I started teaching Pilates in college and that kind of just kind of sent me on the trajectory of just being in all things like wellness and health and movement. And I started teaching Pilates and other fitness classes. And then, um, I, I also got into like with that, like getting into nutrition and just learning all things about the body. I kind of had my own health journey as well, just in terms of, um, I, I grew up with a lot of really bad digestive issues and was in and out of doctors and had probably three or four colonoscopies before I was 17 years old, just trying to figure out what was going on. And so that kind of set me on that path as well, where I'm going, where I am now in my nutrition journey and, and, you know, nutrition coaching and FDMP and all that. I, you know, when I was a kid and I had all the tests, basically the doctors are like, oh, you have IBS, which is like, they don't really know. They just want to give it a name and they don't really do anything about it. And so as I get older, I started reading more and just kind of educating myself. And in my twenties was when I decided I would go plant-based. And so I read some books and I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be vegan. And that's what I did. And uh, it was probably a couple weeks later, I kind of started seeing a difference in my health, how I was feeling, my allergies, my digestive system, all these things started kind of shifting. And I'm like, okay, this clearly is working for me. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of sent me, and it wasn't right away, but it was kind of years later, it kind of sent me on this path where I am now with my nutrition coaching and all of that, just really wanting to learn more about the body and really the importance of nutrition with the human body and being able to offer that. Initially, it was really just to offer it to my clients who are coming in to my doors for my Pilates studio. But then realizing I could really reach a lot more people with an online business, obviously, um, kind of shifting that into an online business, being able to broaden my reach and really help women be able to transform their health and their bodies with nutrition and holistic nutrition and functional nutrition, all of those things. I love that so much. Our bodies are so interesting and there <laughs> is just no like cookie cutter way that what works for you would work for me or the friend down the street or vice versa. And I love that you were like, okay, I'm just going to experiment and see how I feel. Mm -hmm. And that's hard because you have to give that time. Like you said, it just can't be like, well, how do I feel going plant-based for a week? Like it's going to take time to like see any positive changes in your life. And I love that you just advocated for yourself too. We've talked about that a lot here on the show Mm -hmm. with a lot of different guests where it's like, well, I wasn't finding the answers. So I turned to Dr. Google and I experimented on my own and I I figured it out. It's exactly it. And I think that's a huge lesson. That's been a huge lesson for me. Mm -hmm. You're talking about self-transformation at the beginning Mm -hmm. is really learning like your intuition is stronger than you think than you give it credit for. And just being able to listen to that inner voice telling you, like, okay, this is probably what you should be doing mm-hmm. or try this thing, that kind of thing. I think it really is powerful. Yeah. It's just trial and error. And that's the thing with transformation too. Like you might be in a new season of your life and your body has changed again. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Oh, well, I'll try this or try exactly. that. Right. And being mm-hmm. open to that. I love yep. that so much. I, I think, like I said, I think our bodies are so interesting and um, I'm a whole 30 certified coach in addition oh, nice. to the other hats that I wear. And that's kind of like where my own transformation story began back in 2015, just really cleaning up the way I ate and experimenting mm-hmm. with my body and seeing what triggers me physically and emotionally yeah. too, yeah. As, for, as food goes sometimes. For sure. Right. Exactly. Um, and this past year, I haven't done a whole 30 probably, gosh, I thought it was two years, but I think it's been three years. Cause I just, I'm just living my food freedom, but yeah. this past January, I decided to do a whole 30 and I said, I decided to do it from a plant-based perspective. I love that's that. something, um, the whole 30 community is just launching. Yeah. So January 1st, I was like, okay, I'm going to go plant-based for the month. I I'm, yeah. I love eating plant-based a couple days a week anyway. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, I could totally do this. I just need to make sure to up my protein. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I mentioned in my previous episode, unfortunately I got COVID like on oh, day one. Bummer. <laughs> Girl, it kicked my butt. It was like, I was achy for like eight days. And so the fatigue halfway Mm -hmm. through about day 15, I was like, I feel like I need to reintroduce animal protein Mm -hmm. back in just a little bit because the fatigue, I just couldn't get over that hump from adjusting my diet and also being sick at the same time. 
But what I really learned is it's not as hard as it seems totally. to go plant-based. Like, yeah. so I want to know, what do you hear as the biggest miss when it comes to going plant-based? That's a good question. Cause I, I get all of them. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, I think some of the biggest ones, um, one, of, let's see, one big one is people thinking that they're just going to be like sitting around eating carbs all day. Um, which I mean, sure plants have carbs, right. Mm -hmm. But they also have fiber and vitamins and minerals and all of our nutrients. And I think people, people who believe that don't really understand like how food is metabolized and how, um, like your insulin levels work and all that, because, you know, eating as me and you both know, eating, you know, starchy vegetables and whole grains, like quinoa and wild rice, like things like that is not the same response to your insulin as eating like a piece of white bread or eating like just plain regular pasta. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same thing. So thinking like, I'm going to be getting eating carbs all day. I'm going to get fat because I'm eating carbs. Like that's not true. Mm -hmm. Um, and then another big myth is like you were mentioning the protein. A lot of people think that you can't get, I'm using air quotes here, enough protein mm -hmm. on a plant-based diet. Um, which first of all, enough using your quotes is very relative term. Like what is really enough? It's going to depend on a lot of things. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, but knowing doing it the right way and doing it smart and doing it like an educated way and not just doing it like Oreos and French fries way. Cause you can eat Oreos and French fries and be plant-based. <laughs> well, there's so many processed yes. plant-based right. things too. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right. But, but being smart about it and being strategic about planning your meals and stuff to knowing where you can get your protein sources, you can totally get, I mean, you can, I tell my clients this all the time. If you just go Google like vegan bodybuilders, you can look and see guys okay. who are big and huge and muscular that are plant-based. So clearly mm -hmm. it's possible to get into protein. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I think those are probably the two biggest ones. It's the carbs and yeah. the protein thing. People just, there's a lot of misconceptions, especially now with you know, trendy diets like keto and the low carb, all that kind of stuff. It just kind of gives plant-based diets kind of a bad rap because we are eating carbs. So yeah. yeah. I, I, like I said, even though I was sick and like my energy levels were down, like I felt really like clear, you yeah. know what I mean? I felt mm -hmm. clear. Like my mind felt clear, even mm -hmm. though I was like was sick and I felt like I um, inflammation was down totally. at the same time as well. And I know a lot of folks are kind of like, let's go back to the protein thing. So, so for me, just to give you an example, like I was having, um, like hemp protein mm -hmm. shakes to kind of help fill in any gaps. I was adding mm -hmm. hemp seeds to like everything, like mm -hmm. every meal, I was just like poof, throwing some yep. hemp seeds on there, <laughs> a lot of legumes. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked to tofu. It was something mm -hmm. that was scary to me. And mm -hmm. once I found some good recipes totally. to, um, saute it and like dice yep. it up. I was like, this is actually really, like, really, right. really good. And like yes. creamy and mm -hmm. just super, super good. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are, what are some other ways, um, folks can get some added protein? Cause I yeah. think, I think the women listening, they're like, but how do you get enough protein? Right, right, right. Exactly. Yes. And all the ones you listed are perfect. And as they're all the ones I always recommend, um, specifically I find, you know, people that might have difficulties eating a lot of legumes, yeah. um, like digesting them mm -hmm. and, you know, being, feeling gassy and bloated, yep. uh, lentils are always my go-to. I have yes. women who can't eat any other legumes cause it blows up their stomach, but oh, lentils yeah. are so easy to digest. Those are always like, that's like my number one recommendation. And there's, they have so much iron and really do have a lot more protein than other legumes. Um, mung beans are another good one, easy to digest. Um, but yeah, I think tofu is also is good. Tempeh is good, which is just yeah. like a fermented version of, of soybeans. Edamame is good. Um, those are all really great. And just, and I think it's important, like you were saying, finding a good quality plant-based protein powder to, you know, to fill in the gaps or mm -hmm. throw in your smoothies or, um, you know, drink after your workout. Um, nuts and seeds are always good at chia mm -hmm. seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds. All of those are really good. They're good at omegas, which are also something that you're going to need to get, you know, enough of when you're on a plant-based diet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my go-to. 
Yeah. And definitely a good note about too many lagoons. <laughs> yes. It's, it's important to note. Yeah. So I notice if I rinse them the night before mm-hmm. that seems so to help with like mm-hmm. any bloating or gassiness. Yep. And plus like at first, cause I really, I really like the taste of beans. Like I love mm-hmm. black beans. I love, yep. beans. I love mm-hmm. them all. Mm-hmm. But I was like, when I was eating too much, what I noticed, and this was a response I had in my husband too, um, oddly when we were doing a whole 30 one time, when we did the reintroduction, we noticed that I got, I had like a rash on my chest. Oh, I, I think I was eating too many legumes. Mm-hmm. So when I backed off, it went down and that had mm-hmm. happened before when we did a reintroduction, I was like, okay, so I know how much I should mm-hmm. or should not be eating. Exactly. So exactly. again, the body is your own experience. It really is. And it will tell you, it will tell you when it's had too much or, you know, it really will tell you. And, yeah. and I think it's important to, to note for, for anybody looking to either eat more plant-based or to go plant-based. Um, and I tell my clients this too, because <clears throat> I hear a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel so bloated all the time. Like I feel worse than when I started. Mm-hmm. And first rule of thumb, you have to integrate slowly. You can't just throw in a ton of fiber, especially from legumes that are super high in fiber. Mm-hmm. Like all at once your digestive system does not know what to do with all yes, that. It and up. yeah, it literally does. <laughs> and I tell my clients, like you have to train your gut, just like any other muscle in your body. It has to learn how to metabolize and break these things down. You have to build up those enzymes and bacteria that helps. So you really do have to kind of make it a process and not just throw it all at your body at once. Yeah. Well, and like we mentioned earlier, it's your intuition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like for me, I was like, okay, I know this is maybe causing this let's back down and see, or just even the fact that I was like, I'm fatigued. I'm in a unique situation from being Mm -hmm. sick. I feel like I need to up my regular protein sources. Exactly. In the meantime, but like I said, Mm -hmm. what I learned was really great data for myself too. Um, And like I mentioned, my inflammation went down. I Mm -hmm. felt clear headed. What are some other benefits of going plant-based? Yeah, those are all really good benefits because really for my clients to work with the, the, the first rule of thumb um, for most of them that come to me is getting down inflammation. So that's like rule number one, like let's work on getting inflammation down. Um, and it really does help build. It's all about for me, because my, my approach is kind of from the gut health perspective. It's all about building a healthy gut microbiome. And what's great about plants is the fiber. And, you know, we hear about fiber and we think really the benefit is that it makes us regular, which it does, but really there's a lot more to it than that. Because when the fiber breaks down in your body, it breaks down into short chain fatty acids. And that's really where the magic is of the fiber, because this is what helps build healthy lining of your intestines, right? It keeps like strong mucosal barrier in your intestines and your, in your gut. It helps, um, feed the bacteria in your gut. So it helps the healthy bacteria proliferate. It helps keep a healthy balance of good bacteria to bad bacteria. Um, and then it also builds up this like diversity of bacteria in your gut that helps fight off the bugs and stuff. So the fiber really is for me, in my opinion, really the most important piece. And when you're eating a good variety of plants, all different fruits and veggies and legumes and nuts and seeds from all different variety of sources, that's really where you build the strong gut healthy, uh, healthy microbiome is because you're getting all of those variety of bacteria and stuff in your gut. Yeah. We did an episode on, um, the gut and brain connection, like Mm. how it's so connected. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was just like, you know, that those feelings, like when you're like, you're really anxious or you're nervous about something, it could upset your stomach. And I don't think people realize how much that is connected. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and you mentioned, um, like feeling like clear, like your mind is clear, like it really does have an effect. Mm -hmm. It's that, that brain gut connection. It really does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the body. It's so cool. <laughs> it it's so cool. Once you figure things out or you're right? open to figuring things exactly. out. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so what, so if someone's listening and they're like, okay, I don't want to go plant-based because it's trendy, but I want to go plant-based because I'm interested in learning more. I think starting yeah. with a why, like why you mm-hmm. would want to try to eat like this mm-hmm. would be super important to start. But what are some ways someone could think about incorporating some plant-based meals? So we're all about habits here mm-hmm. at the podcast and thinking about what kind of healthy habits can you start incorporating to have these more um, plant-based meals? Because I think for some folks, they might think this might feel overwhelming, maybe if Mm -hmm. they don't cook a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of really easy ways. So for me, when I'm helping people kind of just start integrating into their life, just starting small, right? You're talking about habits. It's Mm -hmm. always important to start small. So for me, it's just picking 
find a meal, one meal a day that you can make plant-based. And typically mm -hmm. breakfast is the easiest place to start. For most people, it's easy to make your breakfast yeah. plant-based. You switch to a plant-based yogurt instead of regular yogurt. You switch to eating, you know, oatmeal and, you know, chia seeds instead of, I don't know, eggs or whatever else mm -hmm. that you're eating. So just being able to transform one meal a day and really breakfast seems to be easy or, or making a smoothie, right? Smoothies are so easy. Throw mm -hmm. some fruits and veggies and protein powder in a blender and you've got, you've got breakfast. Yeah. So just, just finding one meal a day and kind of starting there um, really is just one step because really my approach really is, I call it plant focused. And it's not so much mm. pushing you to be hundred percent plant-based, but it's really just shifting your focus to plants and eating more plants. Mm. I mean, whether that includes meat or not. And, and really for most of the ladies that I work with, they're minus a couple, I guess I've worked with in the past. Most of them really aren't trying to be hundred percent plant-based. They just want to be more plant-based. So it's yeah. just how can I incorporate more plants in my diet. So putting the focus on that. And then again, maybe one meal a day. And then maybe you go from there. Maybe you make one day out of the week, you eat hundred percent plant-based on this one day a week, but just finding little ways like that to incorporate more plant-based meals. Yeah. That seems so less overwhelming. I used to do, um, on Mondays, I was like, it's meatless Monday. Yeah. And I would just not eat meat that I, cause mm -hmm. I didn't want it. And honestly, when I was eating a lot of plant-based meals, the month of January, I felt like they were easier to prepare mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. faster. Cause I yes. didn't have to like cook any meat and wait for exactly. it. Like I rinsed it, the beans the night before mm -hmm. I warmed them up. Good to go. Yep. It's so true. It really, it really isn't as complicated as people think. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like when I'm being women kind of transition. It's like, okay, tell me your two favorite recipes. I'll tell you how to make them plant-based. Like mm -hmm. it really is just a couple swaps to make the meals that you already like plant-based. Cause that's another good habit to build or another trick, I guess, to kind of incorporate more plant-based meals, your two easiest meals that you make for you or your family, whatever, a couple swaps and you can make it plant-based. Yeah. I always talk about something called ingredient meals. Like when thinking about meal prepping and just mm -hmm. thinking about not following like a huge recipe, but mm -hmm. like, Hey, I could throw some cauliflower rice in a bowl. And then I have some frozen veggies. Okay. I can saute mm -hmm. those. Okay. I can add some beans or something on top yep. and Oh, here's this amazing seasoning and sauce. And there's my dinner. Yep. Like, That's it. Easy peasy. I have so all these easy. things in my fridge and freezer, these ingredients were mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Or if you don't like your food, touch it. You can separate yeah. from one of my 13 year olds like that. Sometimes. That's, That's why always. I always throw that in there. <laughs> but yeah, like I felt like it was so much easier. It was less overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely eating more plant-based meals now than I ever had. And I really yeah. enjoyed the experience. And I'm so glad you came on to yeah. shed some more light on it because like I said, your body is so interesting and it's ever changing and transforming. And it's great to do these self experiments for sure on your body to learn that data about yourself and then take that moving forward. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But not looking at it as a diet. Like I don't want to go plant-based just to lose weight. I want to exactly. go plant-based for your why, whether it's right. clarity and less inflammation, you know, animals, you know, all the things there could be a mm -hmm. lot of different reasons, yep. but going in for it, for the right reasons, not just yeah. thinking maybe I'll lose some weight. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hope where can everyone connect with you online? Yeah. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I am at the hope Pedraza. And then I also have a Facebook group. It's live wholesome and healthy. Um, where I do workshops and master classes, we have recipes and all kinds of things, holistic living and plant-based diet. Awesome. Well, Hope, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'll make sure to link all of that in the show notes for everybody. Perfect. Thanks so much, Emily. Yeah. Hope, thank you so much for this conversation, for shedding more light on a plant-based way of eating. I'm super excited to hear everyone's takeaways from this conversation. And make sure to go give Hope's um, podcast a listen to as well. Remember, it is a hopeful and wholesome podcast. I'm going to be on her podcast very soon as well, talking about what else, habits, and self-care. Okay, let's get into the three big takeaways you need from this episode with Hope. So number one, when you decide, okay, maybe you feel a little inspired by some of these past few episodes, like you're like, mm, I want to do a Whole30, or I want to do a plant-based Whole30, or I want to try doing this or doing that with, a, you know, a self-experimentation with my body. And that even that could be even applied towards fitness or sleeping or a lot of different things. Give it time. It's a process. It takes a while for your body to adjust to a new way of either eating or moving your body or whatnot. So give it time. Sometimes we're such in a rush to see immediate results or um, 
even immediate um, not results. <laughs> I guess you you can you can say like we give up a little too early before we actually get to that part part where we seeing we're seeing some results. So if you're doing some type of self experimentation with yourself, your body, it is a process. So give yourself some time and of course a healthy dose of grace. Number two, if you are deciding to do something like a self-experimentation with your body, have a why behind it. So I shared back in episode 123 why I decided to be, um, why to do a Whole30 again this past January January when I hadn't done one in a, in a couple of years. And um, I didn't share with you though at the time it was going to be a plant-based Whole30. That was top secret at the time. But I wanted to do it because it had been a while. I want, I had some new habits creep in that I wanted to evaluate. I wanted to see any food sensitivities, which I was able to um, gather some of that data from myself from doing the plant-based Whole30 and switching to the traditional Whole30 at the end. Um, if you didn't listen to the previous episode, you'll go back and listen to hear why I had to do that. But have a why behind it. So that was my why. You know, and like I said, because of that, I went into it and I really found I was really looking for some um, progress. So just in that time, I felt a little more clear headed. Inflammation was down around my gut. But being aware of what's going on with your body when you're doing something like a plant based Whole30 or a traditional Whole30, like when you're super zoned into what you're doing, it actually allows you to zone into your intuition a little bit more and tune into your body a little bit more. You're able to hear or feel those cues where before maybe you wouldn't have right? You're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just really tired, but oh, maybe, you know, something is triggering my allergies. Or, you know, I thought I was really, you know, had a lot of brain fog because of this. Oh, but when I do this, I feel more clear headed. You know, when you're tuned into something like that, you have a why behind it. You are a lot more in tuned and to that intuition and hearing those cues from your body. So have a why behind it and listen, listen to that intuition and listen to what your body is telling you because it is like a science experiment and it's going to give you some data back that you can really use into your food freedom or anything else you're doing within your life. And then lastly, start small. Of course, we're going to focus around some habit strategy in this episode and every episode, like Hope mentioned, start small. If you're wanting to try to eat a plant-based um, diet for whatever reason that may be, maybe it be ethical, maybe it be um, culturally, maybe it be social, you know, economically, you know, whatever that reasoning is for you, or maybe you've done a Whole30 before and want to see what the experience is um, doing a plant-based Whole30. Start small with one small change a day. So whether, you know, um, Hope mentioned, you know, just starting with a plant-based breakfast because that's really simple and not very overwhelming. I love that. So, you know, establishing that habit, having those things in place in your fridge or pantry ready to go, and then having a time where you are going to cue yourself in to starting that new plant-based habit. So if it's breakfast, you know, maybe it's after your kids get on the bus, you're going to go right into having that breakfast, or maybe it's, you know, after you check your emails and have your coffee, then you start your breakfast and you have it all queued up maybe the night before. That's your visual trigger. Okay. So start small. That way we're not super overwhelmed. Um, One little bonus tip that I think is super important to mention (laughs) that Hope brought up that this is a bonus tip. This is a bonus takeaway. So if you are doing a plant-based way of eating, you cannot do a processed plant-based way of eating. Like she mentioned, like Oreos and French fries. Yeah, those are plant-based, but uh, they're not <laughs> good for you over time. If you're eating Oreos and French fries all over, over time, oh friend, I don't even need to tell you how you're going to feel over time. You may feel amazing in the moment, but over and over and over again, you're not going to feel so good from the inside out. So don't think of this having coming from a lens of, oh, I can just eat whatever I want. You know, there's a lot of processed plant-based food out there, just how there is processed, you know, standard American diet food as well. But start small, like um, we just talked about, think of quality ingredients. You know, we referred back to um, the ingredient meal template that I follow that I teach in my Whole30 courses and I teach in Self Transform You as well because it's such a simple way of thinking of eating and the less overwhelming, okay? Because anytime, friends, when we are starting a new habit, a new rit- ritual, a new routine, it does feel hard. It takes brain power to do that. So make this as simple as possible for yourself. Snart, s- snart, start small, <laughs> 
and see where this takes you over time and don't be afraid to and air quotes fail because I didn't finish my first plant-based Whole30. If you go back and listen to the previous episode, I share why, but I don't consider it a failure. I consider it a success because I learned a whole awful lot about myself and that is exactly what I wanted to do. So make sure again to go listen to Hope's podcast, the Hopeful and Wholesome podcast. It's all, Everything's linked here in the show notes for you for you to connect with her and to listen to me on her episode, on her show as well. And just a reminder, my plant-based Whole30 Anytime course is available. I really loved creating this for you, adding on to what I already had with the Whole30 Anytime course. There's always upgrades available within the course as well to do some one-on-one calls with me or have a texting option too. And if you are one of my Whole30 alumni clients, I will be reaching out to you because I have something special for you if you are wanting to try the plant-based Whole30 because I love you, and I just want to give you a little extra option there as well. So if you have any questions about the plant-based Whole30 or you're really not sure if this is right for you or maybe my Whole30 Anytime course is the better route for you, text me. You can text me at 773-904-2157. You can sign up for those weekly pump-up texts from me, but also you can text me any questions you have about any of my courses, whether it be Whole30, my signature program, Self Transform You, or the Habits That Stick starter kit. Any one of those areas is going to help you reevaluate your habits though, which is where it's at having habit strategy in order to create a healthy lifestyle for yourself from the inside out. That is what I'm here to help you do and to serve you as best as I can. Okay. So get the whole, the plant-based whole 30 anytime course. You can start it anytime or you can get it now and wait and start um, with the nationwide whole plant-based whole 30 on March 1st. All right, gang, thank you so much for listening and happy eating. I'll catch up with you later this week. Hey girl, real quick before you go, if you love today's show and know your girlfriends need to hear this message too, then grab a screenshot, post it to your Instagram stories and tag me at Emily Nichols Tutu because the more mamas out there hearing this message, the more empowered we'll all feel to take care of ourselves so we can pour from a full cup. Or the number one way you can thank me for this podcast is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way, more mamas will find the show here too. Love you and appreciate you, girlfriends. See you next time.